Hi, I'm Paul McGowan, and this is an analog mixing board. An analog mixing board that we use here at Octave Records. And this analog mixing board has a wonderful history to it. It was owned by the Rolling Stones. They used it in their mobile van that re made their recordings and, and uh, did the PA system. It was also owned by Neil Young, and this was what Neil Young crafted many of his songs on. And we wound up acquiring it, and um, it's, it's a real treasure. But an analog mixing board is very different than what most people are used to using today. Most studios today are digital audio recorder, and they don't typically use analog boards because this is older technology. So I'm going to give you a little bit of a brief history and then tell you where we're going in this series. So years ago, when I first got into recording with Georgia Marauder back in, oh geez, the 70s at his Musicland studio in, uh, in Munich, everything was analog. Giorgio had a 16-track Studer tape recorder. It was all tape. I think it was a 2-inch, 4-inch. I don't remember how big the tape was, but it was a Studer 16-track. I don't remember the board. This is a long time ago. But back then, everything was analog, meaning that the actual output of a microphone, if you speak into a microphone, you're going to get an actual output, and that output is analog. And if you plug that into a tape recorder, you'll record it. And then if you take that output from the tape recorder and plug it into an amplifier, you'll hear the recording of the microphone. Now, if you have many microphones or a recording studio back then, you would plug it into a board like this. This is a 32-track machine, a 32-track uh, board that can do recording and mixing. So the routine was, let's say you had uh, 16 microphones and some mics on the drums and some mics on, on the bass, whatever you had. You would control all of it here, make the recording, send that over track by track to your 16 or 24 track tape recorder, analog tape recorder, make the recording, then play it back to this board and use this as a mixing board. And you would wind up with your two channel master over here with the, the masters. And that's how it was done for years. And all that time, we always wanted something better because tape has hiss. Tape's a pain in the ass to edit. I mean, think about it. You edited tape with a razor blade. That was, I've done tons of that in my day. And editing was a real pain in the butt. We wanted something better. And when digital in 1982 came around, this was going to be the holy grail. Now we could make copy after copy without any degradation. We'd have no limitations on dynamic range. We'd have no limitations on frequency response. It was going to be heaven. And then we heard it and went, eh, that sounds awful. Well, that was the beginning of it. And it was awful. Early CDs, early recordings, with few exceptions, were just terrible. And we all stuck with analog. Now, PS Audio, of which I'm the CEO, we delved into digital audio big time because we saw that as the future. That was where it was going to go. But it had a long way towards getting there. So about 10 to 15 years after the CD was introduced, and the CD is all recorded with a technology called PCM, Pulse Code Modulation. You've heard it, 16-bit, 44-1. It's a, a multi-bit digital recording system. And we hadn't found better yet until Sony and Philips came out with a new format called PDM, pulse density modulation, which was a one-bit system running at 64 times the sample rate of a CD. And the first time we heard it, we knew this was it. This not only sounded 
spectacular, sounded so much better than digital audio. It sounded better than analog. And that was critical. But there was a problem. You can't mix DSD. In order to mix DSD, you have to convert DSD to either something called DXD that we'll talk about, which is basically just PCM, or analog, or something else, which is a future topic we will talk about at Octave Records, because we are going to reinvent the art of recording and share that with you. But I digress. So this board is representative of what we call analog recording, which currently is neck and neck in sound quality to the best there is in recording and mixing. So we're going to get into this, and I want to help you in these, this series understand how this works, what it does, and how we use it. And then we will move on. All right. Stay tuned for more. Thanks for being with us. Bye.